Hello, my name is Frédéric Nomager. I'm coming from uh, Renault Corporate Network Division, and uh, we built uh, an application with uh, WebGeo service, or WebGeo services, I don't remember if there, are, there is an S. We're working also with the Geographica here. So I will present you uh, how we use one tool. So I will not be, I will not make many developments about the technical issues, but how we use it from a business point of view. <clears throat> I'm not a, yes, okay. So let's say, uh, uh, you do it or I do it? Ah, this one, <laughs> pardon. Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick overview of uh, why do we need a geomarketing tool and this kind of technologies. Uh, we are a group. Uh, since this morning, we are not married with uh, Fiat. So uh, this group has six brands without uh, Nissan Alliance. We, sell, we sold uh, nearly 4 million cars last year, and we have more than 13,000 outlets. Big ones, small ones, in many countries. And um, what we want to do is we want to optimize them. We want to optimize locations. We want to take into account several considerations. The first one is customers. Customers want to find uh, outlets to buy cars or to service cars nearby. So they want to have many, many outlets. But investors, on the contrary, they don't want to have so many outlets. They want to have profitable ones. So few ones, big outlets, and uh, with a good margin. And uh, Renault SAS, Renault uh, Group, as a company, we have also our own objectives, like uh, the brand uh, standards, uh, signage, uh, and in the end, uh, volumes. So we have several stakeholders, several, um, let's say, needs to take into account. In the end, we have also different uh, objectives. In Spain, we sold last year nearly 200,000 cars. In Australia, we sold 10,000 cars. Um, we have several brands. We have Alpine cars here. We have two outlets in Spain. And Renault outlets, we have more than 50, uh, 550. So geolocation, optimized location is really different depending upon brands and objectives. So <clears throat> we built a tool. But it, it has to be a very practical tool, because we have today 20, 33, 37 countries uh, operational, and we are planning, planning to have more. So our, <clears throat> our need is to have one unique common tool, which works for 37 countries, with data sets which are reliable in 37 countries. It's always easy to find data for Spain for France and Germany. The stake for us is to have data in Malaysia, in Argentina, Russia, China, South Africa, everywhere, to have one unique tool for one uh, unique company. So we need to have, of course, every, uh, everything that uh, was said this morning about data clean, uh, da clean data, uh, reliable data, and so on. We face it everywhere. And we also have uh, the, the, the need to have also local teams, because as I am a corporate uh, manager, I'm in charge of defining tools, methods, but I will not analyze the 50 country uh, territorial coverage, or I will not define optimal location everywhere. So we have teams in countries, and the stake is to have one common tool, training for everybody, and knowledge and uh, transfer know-how transfer to have, um, let's say, skilled teams using the tool everywhere. So uh, we have to, the, the, the spreading of the knowledge is a very uh, important uh, element for us in the geomarketing strategy. Um, oh yes. So <clears throat> when we talk about data, 
we have uh, many times some, uh, let's say, geographical or administrative uh, boundaries like that with the socio-demographic data like uh, population, uh, wealth, and so on. But in the end, we have to find also uh, more precise, more accurate data uh, to refine our analysis of territorial coverage. In the end, we want to be where people are. So sometimes we need to have additional data sets like these ones to be able to calculate the coverage and the objective, to be sure that the potential that we meet is, uh, corresponds to uh, the, the business that we want to do. For, uh, and it really depends upon countries and upon brands. Uh, we are now uh, new uh, in China, for instance. We have a company which name is Jinbei. And in China, you have to be near the population. But what does it mean when you have more than one billion people? So we need to have first to know where they are. And we need to define a real precise strategy in order to have the right network uh, rightly positioned, near customers, um, and not overlapping themselves, because sometimes you have uh, empty areas with uh, potential and uh, several outlets in the same vicinity. So data is really, really important for us. So the tool that we have now, um, I'm not going to do a demonstration, just to show you uh, in three parts, maps to show results. Um, uh, results and configuration panel. In the end, uh, there was a lady uh, this morning who talked about Excel. In the end, everybody, everything finishes with Excel. Because <clears throat> if I tell uh, an Algerian guy that uh, the outlet is not well situated, that he should delete it and replace it somewhere else, as it represents uh, one, two, three, four, not in Algeria, but in some countries, five million euros investment, it's not with a nice map that I will convince anybody. So we have to have nice maps to present uh, and to do analysis. We have to have uh, calculations of KPIs, key performance indicators. And in the end, we have to do deep dives when we want to convince investors or countries that they have to change things, to create outlets, to delete outlets. So, um, so. Uh, Yes, we use also the street view. It's always uh, impressive for anybody when we discuss with Argentina, for instance, to know and to talk about the same element and to identify outlets and so on. So this one is uh, uh, very much appreciated. So I'm going to talk about KPIs, key performance indicators. For the business, we have defined four main KPIs. And uh, in the Renault company, we defined, uh, we we share, the, we share them. Uh, when it's a worldwide company like us, like ours, uh, one of the difficulties is to have unique indicators, unique index shared by all business entities. So in this one, we have uh, these. So numbers, we have to have proportionate uh, our networks. We have to have networks which are, if we have 10% of the dealers in one country, we hope to do at least 10% of the sales. If we have 10% of the dealers and we do 15% of the sales, then we are more efficient than the competition. If we have 10% of the dealers and do only 5% of the sales in the country, we are less efficient than others. So we discuss with our countries on, based on these uh, elements, and uh, we try to optimize either locations, numbers of outlets. Coverage, uh, because uh, as uh, in uh, nearly all businesses, uh, you know, in marketing you learn about the four P, uh, price, uh, positioning, uh, place, and promotion, and the place, 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 hit this one. We have to be where the people are, where the people buy their cars or their service. So territorial coverage is a real issue for us. And we have to dimension networks, which are rightly uh, dimensioned for that one. And of course, we need to limit overlap. We have countries with many, many outlets. All outlets are in the same city. So this is not optimum. Even if the business is in the city, in one city, 
Uh, let's say in some countries like uh, Colombia, you have uh, nearly uh, 40% of the market in Bogota. So you have to be in Bogota, but not only in Bogota. So you have overlap, which is acceptable by us, and overlap, which is not, uh, which we discuss with our countries. Um, so, yes, it was just an example of what we have in, in our tool to discuss with our uh, countries and to talk, about, to talk with them about how they should optimize their network. So we can go uh, here, it's a European uh, example, but when we go into Austria, we have the same figures. In Belgium, the same figures by province and by cities in order to uh, have a shared understanding of uh, KPIs, whether they are outlet count, coverage, overlap, and drive time. And this is one also example of one of the discussions that we may have in France with uh, our uh, national sales company. And when uh, you have to optimize your network, so uh, for instance, this example would say that uh, in Brittany, which is west of the country, uh, you have uh, less than six minutes to go to a Renault dealer, because in France we have nearly 4,000 dealers. Uh, and uh, it's above uh, seven minutes in the Toulouse area. So it's up to the regional directions to analyze this and to define if locally, it's a good drive time objective or not, depending upon the commercial objective they have. Okay, uh, coverage. Uh, these are examples of, um, let's say, local city analysis. We have one outlet. We can analyze its uh, 10, 15, 30 minutes isochrone area and to define if the potential in this area uh, is correct, or if it has to be optimized. And in each area, you also identify competition. With this, you give commercial objectives to your network. If one dealer has one competitor, his commercial objective in market share will be higher than if he is in the center of Madrid with 30 competitors around. So we understand that. We give them uh, objectives also depending upon the competition. Depen uh, objectives in, and we use this kind of uh, maps to analyze local competition and to define objectives. Uh, one other issue also is to, uh, is to define where there is a potential. So in this case, what we would uh, say is there are areas in the country, in a region, in a district, where there is a potential not yet covered by Renault. It can be Renault, Dacia, Alpine, uh, Lada, and so on. So in this area, we have locations, Renault locations, we have Potential, the potential can be population, it can be uh, purchasing power, depending upon countries. For instance, in South Africa, they don't talk about population. They don't put outlets in Soweto, in ghettos. They put outlets where there is money. In Brazil, the same, no outlets in favelas, outlets where there is money. In other countries, mo most of the time, uh, population and wealth correspond. Uh, so here we have to identify, and the tool helps us to identify areas where there seems to be a potential. So after that, we have to analyze if we can create a service outlet, a sales outlet, whatever, for Renault, for Dacia, and so on, and to have a profitable activity in this, uh, in this place. Overlapping, yes, uh, so why don't we like op uh, overlapping? Because overlapping means uh, internal competition. If you are a customer, you have to, if you want to buy a Renault, you will go to the next outlet and you will ask for a rebate. You will go to the other outlet and you will ask for another rebate. So we will compete uh, internally to give you the best price, which is not optimum for us, 
from a margin point of view, this is not optimal. So I, either we, uh, we talk with one another uh, to not to give you the uh, higher rebates and to keep our margin, higher, uh, either we don't do it. If the two outlets belong to the same investor, we can manage the situation. If the two outlets belong to A and B investors, they will want to do the sale and they will give you big rebates. So this is why we don't like uh, overlapping and we try to limit it. But sometimes it is necessary, uh, in this example, sometimes one could do sales, the other could do uh, after sales only, so in this case, no competition. But <coughs> we have uh, cases of internal uh, competition which we want to limit. Uh, when I say that uh, many things end with Excel files, this is one example of this one. So here we have only Europe results and only at country uh, level. This is an example of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, global reporting. When we rank networks, when we rank evolutions, and when we talk with our countries about that, we say, okay, let's say um, in Austria, uh, we, ha uh, we, ha we have, we have the, the fifth network in number of outlets. The, the delta here means that it is the same position as before. Um, the coverage, we are also the fifth, so same more or less same performance, and we cover 98% of the population in Austria. And we gained two ranks, uh, so this one is uh, okay. But uh, for instance, uh, here in Switzerland, we lost one rank. So it's not very complicated. We still cover 97% of the population, but in Europe, it's uh, more or less uh, like that. But in other countries, you have to, um, to propose a network which, uh, which, ha which has the, a good efficiency. If we lose ranks, sometimes it is because we deleted outlets, so it's normal to lose coverage. But sometimes, when we don't do anything, the competition does. So if competition does better than us, then uh, it, um, uh, we lose some ranks. In the end, nobody really cares about geomarketing in itself. What we do care about is uh, associated sales. So if we are less close to um, customers than other brands, as proximity is one of the key factors to go to one dealer, we may lose some customers. So, and in the end, we lose um, turnover margin. So this is why we are, we are so interested in these geomarketing KPIs. Um. And this is one of the examples uh, we, we give to our countries. So, using the tool, uh, analyze in your country where you have good and bad performance. So, um, where is the lowest network coverage in your country? What we expect them to do is to identify the regions where the coverage is lower and to, uh, to do deep dive analysis and to increase, if necessary and if profitable, coverage in this region. The same for after sales. Uh, a high drive time is bad for us because high drive time, if you, if you have to do 30 minutes to go to service your Renault, you won't do it. You will go to a competition. If you have to do 15 minutes, then it's okay. Most of the time, you are not ready to, to drive a, a long time to do uh, some operations. You are ready most of the time to drive, uh, let's say, up to 30, 40 minutes to buy a car because you do it every five or seven years. But uh, to service your car, you do it sometimes once or twice uh, per year. So you, don't, you, you really don't want to, to drive too to, to, to long. Uh, overlapping outlets, this is one of the issues that we have with our countries. We ask them to identify overlaps. 
and in the end to justify them. If overlapping is not justified, then please delete outlets. Uh, it can be justified. <laughs> and uh, also uh, other uh, exports and so on, uh, which network is ranked uh, first for some KPIs. Because as in most of businesses, we have, <coughs> let's say, uh, competitors, uh, favored competitors. Sometimes we follow one brand in one country, and uh, we try to do, uh, this is the target. So we have to either to follow it, or we have to, if we are uh, beyond them, we try not to be, um, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but uh, to be uh, rejoined, <coughs> like that. And efficiency, this is one thing that, we talk, uh, that I just uh, talked briefly before. Efficiency, we have really uh, issues about that. We have one country where uh, Mercedes sells uh, as many vehicles as we do, they have 50 outlets, and we have 250 outlets. So there was a new sales director. He arrived in this country, and the network development manager had a very good time to justify why he needs 250 outlets, where Mercedes needs only 50. Uh, so the career of the lower guy is not a very... Uh, Flavoring, <laughs> but no, no. This is really, really something like that. You know, if you have to, if you want to have a profitable network, this is a trade-off between number and volumes. So, number of outlets. We try to have as few as possible outlets, but corresponding to, uh, let's say, the the customer needs. So. Customer wants to have a high number, we want to have a low number, so it's a trade-off and an equilibrium to find between them. them. Okay, so this was my uh, presentation. <laughs> if you have questions, uh, I want.